Hello everyone, my name's Paul Ridd. I'm a program advisor for the BFI London Film Festival and we're absolutely delighted to have the film Inland playing at the festival. Um, right now, we have the great honor of uh, welcoming three guests from the production. Um, this is a film which absolutely blew us away when we saw it. It's such a strange, enigmatic and rather beautiful piece of work. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome the director Fritjof Ryder and the actors Rory Alexander and Mark Rylance to the screen for you to watch and um, see us talk about the film. So thank you all so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to have you. Thank you. Um, cool. I'd like to sort of just, first of all, ask you, Fritz, off a little bit about the genesis of the project and to talk a little bit about where all of this comes from, because I think the thing that really struck me when I saw the film is it's so unusual in terms of the way it deals with narrative and just in terms of what you are presenting to to the world as your first feature. So could you start by sort of talking to us a little bit about how this all came together and where this project comes from? Yeah, sure. Um, I feel like it's one of those things where when you think about it in reverse, like all the way back, it's quite hard in terms of the film changed so much and morphed so much, like in the edit and even now, and then uh, in the shoot itself and then in the script before. But I feel like it's... Uh, I don't know. I think if I think about it in any kind of uh, coherent way, it's just fragments of stuff and <laughs> interests at a certain point in time, and like having a having a fucking folder of notes on your phone that sort of builds and builds and builds. And at a certain point, you're like, "There's something. There's something in it, or there's something here, or it feels like there's something here." And at a certain point, it starts asking to be something more than a couple of scenes and ideas and like a walk in the forest that you had once in Gloucester or um yeah so it's, it starts to build itself and I think the script went through a load of changes uh in that process of like there was there were kind of influences and things coming in and I was reading a load of stuff like uh, a load of great like new uh, ecology stuff and I was reading like Underland which is like a wild book um and uh, a ton of stuff like that, which sort of started informing the feel and thinking about, because I think there was the story of the, there's sort of the really basic story or the, the like what feels like the center of the whole film to me of kind of like the father and the kid, like the lost child and the mother. And it's, that's the dynamic and that's the whole film. And that's kind of like the heartbeat or like the pulse of the film. Um, but then all the stuff around that and all the interests around that, which is kind of, what the whole film's built out of and it's really hard to string any kind of half coherent sentence about because it feels like literally literally like that from moments you've spent in the forest because Gloucester's kind of ringed by a load of forest all around and all the way back to being a child and playing Robin Hood in the forest and whatever like that like a feel for that and a feel for the forest and a feel for the woodland being pressing in and being all around but also being a place you felt really free in and I always wanted to be in and sort of trying to get that in and then the folk aspect and like interests in Arthurian legend and then interests in sort of like folk tales and folk stories and uh, stuff like that and all of that coming together and then even Mark and just having loved Mark for ages, which um, <laughs> like with Jerusalem and that feeling like a very, uh, feeling like a really cogent um, expression, I guess, of that stuff that I was feeling, like feeling like a, a something that talked a lot about about all those things, not in a conscious thinking uh, literary way, but just kind of talked about them through characters and through a place, and trying to sort of do, uh, trying to sort of feel that in what I was trying to make. So when you talk about these sort of basic building blocks that you had in the script that, as you say, evolved and changed over time, was there a degree of kind of collaboration in scenes, in dialogue, in, in the way scenes came together? Was there a level of improvisation that was going on when you were shooting or were there basic sort of dialogue exchanges that you had mapped out that were very clearly done for the purposes of moving the narrative along? I think the dialogue stayed pretty same didn't it guys i feel like from like actual dialogue scenes and the way they were written and that was uh there but then there was sort of the thing of like finding pockets of time in which you suddenly you've got sunset and you've got an hour and you can shoot something else and you've got you've got actors here so let's do that and loads of that crept into the film 
and to start with tons of it crept into the film and then had to get sucked back out at a certain point as well in the edit but bits of that definitely stay and remain uh and are some of my favorite scenes sometimes but in terms of the actual forwards movement there were especially all the exchanges with mark and rory and all those scenes i feel like they they had a kind of life on the page that carried on yeah and then just in terms of obviously you having this um broad outline of a story that you wanted to tell and then a very kind of impressionistic intuitive approach to both making the film and editing um how does that feed in and this is perhaps a question for rory and mark as well how did that feed into the whole casting process was there a lot of discussion about the themes in the film about what you were going for and um, that went into the process was there a degree of rehearsal perhaps rory if you could speak first to that um the process started purely on conversations fritz and i started exchanging emails and we went long form quite early um because fritz really outlined what he thought this film was and what he thought this character was dealing with and and i had to slightly respond in kind it wasn't a traditional casting email of can you be in soho at 10 a.m um and through months and months of conversation and many different drafts that Fritz was constantly changing um it felt like we had collaboratively or i had been party to um getting to the point where it's like okay well well n- now we're ready to go um and i'll leave mark to speak more about this but in terms of rehearsal i mean i personally just did as much work as was possible in my research and sort of building up the character from up until the point that the film starts existing within the script and i sort of did as much work as i could up until that point um but it's not particularly useful reading a script so many times that you know exactly what someone's going to say after you say your line it's sort of one of the pitfalls of knowing what happens in a script is you know what comes next and one of the joys of it was that in the ways that we would do the scenes we would they would just come out so differently so that in itself kind of was the rehearsal play space because you could have cut this film in 10 different ways and had very very different relationships and narratives using the same material but they just played out differently in in the moment so um we had we had the space to just play around and experiment without it being right you got two weeks of rehearsal and kind of formalized in that way. And then Mark obviously just to speak first to your process of becoming involved with the film. Obviously you have a, a very illustrious career on the stage and and a film career. What was it about this specific project that drew you to it and how did you come to be involved? Well the screenplay, you know, it draws me to most things. If I if I if it resonates with me and what Fritjof was just saying about the forest on the edge of town walks in the forest wherever i've lived i've always been drawn to the bit of scrapland or wilderness lucky if there's a forest uh, but some that i've always been drawn into those places and into all the myths and fairy tales that i grew up loving and that they they often they usually involve a journey into the wilderness into the darkness and into the dappled light rather than the rational light um of open ground also the the theme of the of a young kind of mythological searcher that that Rory plays searching for a mother um who who who's lost um con- connected with connected with i suppose yeah i suppose connected with my feelings about ecology and with the proper relationship to the earth that we're searching for um so th- those those things really drew me to it um and uh it was in the early days of the pandemic or the 6 or 7 months into the pandemic i had no work uh and and so i thought why not you know why not go out and 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 hang out with these these guys and then of course it was fantastic because i hadn't made a film with very young filmmakers for a while and the consciousness of of films that the internet can offer to a, to young filmmakers fritjof has seen everything 
He's seen all the films, and so uh, everything, you know, like like you could in the day if you fell in love with Murakami or some author Dostoevsky, you could then read all of those novels, and people who loved literature did. And the inter whereas when I was a kid, you know, you had to wait for the films to come to the Scala or to to the different cinemas. You, you, sometimes there were seasons. The BFI was a great place actually to find out about filmmakers, but I, we we had such as well as doing filming the scenes, we'd sit around a big fire, uh, a big fire, about 25 of us, um, everyone else in their 20s, and, and these most wonderful discussions and debates would go on uh, about, uh, about filmmakers, whether they were true or not, whether they kept to their diamond or whether they'd gone off. And I was so bowled over by the awareness and consciousness and ability of the young people to... Um, to talk about these films and, and their ambitions are high. You know, Fritjof's ambition is high, it's great. He's not in it to make a living, he's in it to, to, to do something remarkable as, as the filmmakers that he loves have done. The last thing I want to say, you asked about rehearsals. What was really impressive to, to me, and I came away uh, learning from Fritz, is that when we would do the scenes, you probably remember this too, Rory, we would do multiple takes not because the camera hadn't captured it or something was wrong, but because he wanted to amplify or reduce, like a mixer, different things. So he would say to me, increase your compassion for Rory's character. And now diminish that and increase your desire to confront him, become harder. So he, he was taking different aspects of, of the uh, drama and of our character's potential and, and, and mixing them on set so that he had different takes um, uh, that he could use in the edit as he needed. And that was very wise. And I w I'm amazed that more film directors don't do that, don't know how to talk to actors and, and use our capability. Do, do you remember that, Rory? Was that your, I remember in the garage particularly, so many lovely versions of the scenes. It would be, it would be very gently done um, mm. because... Fritz, Fritz can like he has the c capacity to explain something as eloquently as anyone. Yeah, but it, it was it, a mixer is a is a nice analogy. He would just say more or 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 less, and you would sort of you you just instinctively knew what he meant, and it was so freeing. And and I think exactly we didn't have to rehearse because, and it's a joy of doing scenes with Mark is that. It, you know, if I if I scratch my elbow, so, you know, he'll he'll pick you up on it, and you 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 have to be in the very present moment. So everything will take on a a very present and sort of true to exactly what's happening in that moment. Take, but I think the trust that we had in the characters and the work that we had done, and then the belief in Fritz to, when he would say this or that meant that these very subtle adjustments would have very different outcomes. And you, you would finish a scene laughing when the take before you'd kind of walked out almost in silence thinking, you know, I'm, I'm not speaking to that guy again. But then they had followed the same path, but just organically changed. And I, I, I assume it's rare. I haven't, I haven't worked with enough people. My, my, my data set is too small, but I assume that's very special. It felt special at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I really like this analogy that you, you talk about with this mixer, because it feeds into something you were saying earlier, Fritz, about your approach to the film as a whole and how it came together and evolved and changed even while you were producing it, even whilst you were sort of making it and then cutting it. Um, was that sort of a philosophical principle that you kind of set out to, to do to almost say, well, I'm going to go and make this film and then it will come together after the fact, because that seems quite unusual in terms of um, certainly independent filmmaking. I guess there's like, a, there's a load of stuff in that. Like there's uh, maybe to a certain extent, there's kind of being shit scared. And to another extent, there's getting excited and like actually just being excited in the play, like in the, just like you have a bunch of people. And I guess I hear the leadership thing in a certain way, but also like you have, a bunch of people all just playing at something. And so you want to try and do it as much as you can in the time you have and in as many ways as you can in the time you have. 
and you want someone else to throw an idea and you want someone you want to field something from a costume designer or you want to field something about mark's hair or about something that's going on with rory's jacket or maybe it'd be more fun if you know there's a certain thing on his jacket that says something and you hadn't thought it but also the thing of uh i guess the idea of um you know yeah you know what you want but you know you also know what you want when it's presented to you and reflected back at you uh and shown to you you don't necessarily go in i mean we storyboarded a bunch but we threw a load of the storyboards out you know even mm. even like that and uh the start starting to shoot is there's so much weird like mystical stuff that happens just even in like the first time you shoot a load of close-ups and it's like does it want to be on a 50 mil lens and you go nah i feel like it wants to and then you go in and then suddenly from then on every time you're shooting a scene with close-ups you can feel the 85 mil lens in the box like asking to come out and then you you know you shoot it and it's and it works and there's like a there's like you question and you think about it to a certain extent but also once you're shooting you don't have a lot of time and then i guess that's the same uh as like with what you were asking that's the same in the edit that's the same i mean there was so much in the edit of sort of you try and rip you, you, it's like every every time the first time you see the edit i mean scorsese says it you're like oh jesus like oh god and then then you start going in a really different direction and putting a load of stuff in and in the end it's sort of somewhere in between and you kind of find your way there maybe to start with you work at it a bit too violently and you try and do the opposite of how you're feeling about it but you kind of especially with this film it felt like there's a place where it kind of vibrates and where it makes sense uh and you try and find that place and that was even with like we put in uh the mother's voiceovers were written like after we had shot and came in after we had shot and you know there was like a certain pitch and a certain tone and we we had we spent quite a lot of time discussing that i mean with you mark as well it's kind of like what is it is it leaning into something too much does it not sound enough like a real person does it sound too much like you're some bullshit or some poetry or where where does it lie that feels right and that was the same it's like a like a smoothing over and over and over the thing until you can feel like it's vibrating in the right place i don't know whether that's any kind of an answer but that was really how it felt i think one thing that really sort of struck us about the film is this idea of taking these sort of familiar worlds or familiar visual elements this kind of kitchen sink realist space but applying to it a very very different kind of visual or formal style i think of so much of the film as being these kind of very tight almost claustrophobic close-ups that you mentioned fritz and that seems at odds with a lot of the films that are sort of emerging that are in a much more sort of lochian tradition or something that belongs to a kind of more play for today social realist mold so yeah it's, it does feel very different can i just ask just in, for mark and rory really i suppose is there something that you would sort of take away from the project that you might apply to future projects is there a sort of approach that you took away from this that you would like to apply to work going forward um yeah i mean so many things i learned more on this project than i have on everything that i've done since before we started we i think i was having a bit of an existential and sort of going fritz i don't know what the hell i'm doing and he sort of said in his own way yeah nor do i um but you're not the only person telling this story i know you probably are sitting in your bedroom thinking i'm the lead in a film but i'm doing a lot of work ravi our wonderful dop is doing a lot of work the lights are doing work, the music is going to do work, the edit is doing work. And there was such an early understanding from him, which filtered through and really came through the kind of communal experience of, of making the film. And obviously Mark's doing a lot of work, um, but that, that there are so many languages in film and that if you get too stuck thinking about your own one, you're going to slightly stop understanding everyone else. And, the way that all of those different things have been combined together and were combined at the time felt like i don't know if total film is a phrase but it you know it was all all the forces had been had been activated everyone everyone was going and it was all in sync 
And Mark, I don't know if you have some thoughts about um, your process going forward in relation to this film. Um, obviously, it was a very sort of different experience, as you've described. Would this be the kind of film that you might do again in the future some, sometime soon? Would you want to work with Fritz again, perhaps? Yeah, I definitely want to work with Fritz off again and Rory. Yeah, I like what Rory has said about, you know, you in this kind of project, you're aware that everyone's got a job to do. Everyone's working together. It doesn't fall on one person, you know. And I think that's one of the reasons people like to support Fritjof is that he's appreciative and he doesn't, um, he does, he needs to, you know, there are times a director absolutely needs to make the decisions and lead, but I didn't, he wasn't leading with forcefulness. He was leading with light and inspiration and love. You know, he, he perhaps loved it the most of all of us. So we were going to be drawn to him. Um, but but big films get so compartmentalized into expertise and you know you don't you don't really you don't really have such a connection with a collective so that 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 can lead to a lot of neurosis uh for the actors and 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 false feelings of over responsibility and stuff like that rather than collaboration so this was a good reminder of the beauty of collaboration and the reality of collaboration thank you so much guys for joining us at fritjof rory and mark it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you about the film um, thank so you thank you thanks a lot